Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to integrate Home Assistant with Amazon. As always, if you prefer the written version of this guide, you can head on over to techtechandmoretech.com or check the link in the description below. I just wanted to mention that in the rest of this video, I'm gonna be referring to as Alex, so I don't have to keep muting myself and so it doesn't set off your devices. Now, there are three different ways of getting Home Assistant integrated with Alex. The first one is to have Home Assistant Cloud, which is a $5 a month sort of subscription that gives cloud access to your Home Assistant and that gets integration with Amazon and Google services. Now, $5 a month isn't a lot if you have a whole lot of different devices that you wanna integrate and you just want the peace of mind of a simple solution, but I've only got about four different devices in my Z-Wave switches that I wanna integrate and I didn't really just wanna spend any money. And then there's option number two, which is create a custom Alex skill for integrating your home assistant. Upon a little bit of research, this seemed like a lot of work with a lot of things that could go wrong and I really wasn't willing to put in that amount of time and effort for something that isn't super crucial. And then there's thankfully option number three, and that is called Emulated Hue, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Emulated Hue essentially tricks Alex into thinking that your home assistant hub or instance, whatever, is actually a Philips Hue hub. This makes the integration actually really easy and it makes it easy to add into Alex, but there are a couple drawbacks. The main drawback is because it thinks it's a Hue Hub, all the devices that you sort of port over, it's gonna think are light switches because it's all that Hue actually supports. Now for me personally, this was perfectly fine because all I'm bringing over are Z-Wave um, light switches. So you got on off and you've got a couple of different brightness settings, perfect. But if you've got a lot of different devices and sensors and this and that, it might not be as optimal of a solution for you. Like I mentioned, getting this up and running is actually pretty straightforward, but it is a little bit tedious. So all you need to do to follow along is have a working home assistant and have some sort of Amazon Echo device. If you got both of those, we're gonna jump into the configuration.yaml file on your home assistant now. So if we go to home assistant and we go to our file editor and then our configuration.yaml file, this is the initial text that we need to paste in. And of course, this will all be linked down below. But Emulated Hue is the name of the integration. Type is Alexa because you can also do Google uh, Home. Host IP is gonna be the IP address of your home assistant. If you haven't already, give it a static IP address in your router settings, because otherwise if it changes, um, this won't be valid and then it won't be able to find it and you'll have errors and you'll have to update it every time. So I'd highly recommend going to your router settings and giving your home assistant a static IP address. Port 80 is the port that it needs to access. Um, from what I've read, if your ISP or whomever has blocked port 80 or has restricted it, this isn't gonna work for you, unfortunately. Uh, to my knowledge, there's no workaround. Amazon needs to be able to use this port to access it. Maybe some people have figured it out, but from my research, it was not possible without having port 80 accessible. Exposed by default means that Alex will see all of your home assistant devices by default. And I put this to false because I don't want any duplicates. I've already got plenty of other devices synced across multiple ecosystems like my Hue lights, for example. So I don't want to have duplicates. I only want to add the devices that are not already in um, my Echo devices. So that's why I have this to false. If you only have a couple devices and you've got nothing in your Echo devices so far, you could put true and then everything will come over and then that'll be easy for you. But I think most people are gonna want false because they wanna pick and choose which devices come over. Exposed domains is, is just gonna tell it which two types of devices essentially it's gonna be looking for. So for me personally, I've got lights and I got switches, the most basic, you know, smart home device that you can have. And then I basically just write out the entities that I want ported over. This is the part where I would highly, highly suggest renaming all your entities to have, you know, very sort of easy to read names so you know exactly what they are. For example, ceiling lights, kitchen lights, office fan, guest bedroom light, and shelf light. I know exactly what they are. I don't, they're not 
uh, product specific with a whole bunch of letters and numbers that might not make sense. So if you haven't already done that, I would highly suggest going into your um, devices and entities page and just renaming them really simple names. And then you will just name out everything. You know, you got your light, dot ceiling lights, you're gonna give it a name, and this is the name that's gonna show up um, in your Alex app. Hidden, false, because we want it to actually show up. And then there's the same thing over and over again up until you find that you have basically filled out all the devices that you want. One thing to pay close attention to is the spacing. This, for because of the way it's built, spacing is super important in your configuration file. If you have spacing in the wrong order or something like that, it's not gonna work. You always wanna look for this green check mark at the top when you're done populating your configuration file. So with that being said, pretty much everything's gonna have two spaces and then after that, another one, etc., etc. So keep a close eye on this. This is the way it should be because obviously mine works. Uh, if you need to pause it, um, you can do that. There's screenshots on the written portion of things. So you can double check to make sure that all of your spacing is correct and everything works as it should. Once you have written all of this down, all you gotta do is then hit on save. So you can hit the save button up there and you're gonna restart your home assistant. Pretty straightforward, server controls and restart. You can also do check configuration to make sure that everything is valid. And then you're gonna hit on restart. After your home assistant has restarted, you can actually verify to make sure that all of those devices are gonna be seen by going to your IP address of your home assistant and then port 80 and then slash API slash PI slash lights and enter and you should get a bunch of sort of mumbo jumbo like this. But if you look closely, you'll see that all of the lights, all of the entities that you listed out should be named there. So I got ceiling lights. Basically everything is here. You kind of have to look through it because it's a whole lot of stuff, but you should have everything here. If all of your devices that you listed out in your configuration file right here, if they all show up here, that means you should be good to go. At this point, we're gonna switch over to our phones. So let's go ahead and open up the Alex app on your phone. So we're gonna to go to Alex. And then if you don't already have the Hue skill enabled, you're just gonna do that. Um, so let's see, more skills. If you need to search it, search Hue. And boom, go ahead and install it if you haven't already installed it. Obviously mine is there. And then you're gonna to go to devices and add new, add device. And then we're gonna search Hue. And then discovered devices. It will probably take the full 45 seconds. So we're gonna fast forward a little bit and then we're just gonna add those devices and we should be done. And here we go, some new devices, choose device. So right now I found only three of my devices so that's okay, let's just set those up real quick. Let's see if we try it again, if we'll get the rest of those devices. And discover devices again. It's not the most perfect system in the world, but eventually you should be able to get everything. If you're having trouble adding all of the devices, go ahead and just restart your home assistant, see if that helps. Um, sometimes doing a little restart of both will eventually get you the result you want, which is all of your devices coming over. And there you have it folks. You now have Home Assistant fully integrated with your Echo devices. You get the best of both worlds. You get Home Assistant as a sort of central local hub, but then you also get the voice control of your smart home as well. If you liked the video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for plenty more videos to come. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I will get to them as best I can. And until next time, see ya.